Hello there, it's Linda Pinizzato at the Hayes FM here in Mississauga. And, uh, you know, we were getting a ton of fantastic information today from the Mississauga Sports Council because we're honoured to have Catherine Holland, the Executive Director, and Susan Stewart, who's also on the Board of Directors. And as a matter of fact, she is an Olympian in Atlanta in 1996 and a Mississauga Sports Hall of Famer. Now, you know, Catherine, I I guess, Susan, you know what? Both of you, I got to tell you, so many Mississaugans, not only Mississauga, I mean, I think all of Ontario is pretty excited about the Pan Am Games. You know, I mean, if I look at what contributions Mississauga Sports Council has given to the community and now being right at the forefront for Mississauga for the Pan Am Games. And well, you know, I think that uh, so all of the arenas, I I know Iceland will be used, uh, not only the Hershey Centre, but I think the sports complex at the Hershey Centre has booked up for archery and what, what kind of sports are going to be playing in different venues across the city. We're very excited about it. It's a great opportunity for Mississauga and to have. Uh, not only the Pan Am Games, but the Parapan Games joining us in 2015 and people coming from uh, around the world, mostly the, the Pan American countries. But it'll it'll bring world attention to the Toronto Greater Horseshoe area and definitely Mississauga. So we're lucky to have the Hershey Centre going full tilt, hosting both the Pan Am and Parapans. From July 10th to July 26th, we'll be hosting wrestling, taekwondo, judo, and karate as part of the Pan Am Games, and then following that up as part of the Parapan, we will be hosting rugby, powerlifting, and goalball. Now, uh, come that time of year, the Hershey Center will be referred to as the Mississauga Sports Center for the Pan Am Games. But uh, great opportunities for the community going forward, the Sports Council, the City of Mississauga, and a variety of groups, Volunteer MBC. We're all encouraging the community to get engaged in the Pan Am Games. You can volunteer on the Pan Am Game website, and that process opened on April 7th. So currently, Pan Am uh, 2015 is accepting volunteer applications to get engaged in the process to to be part of this special event that uh, really has only been in Canada twice before, uh, in both times in Winnipeg. So to, to bring it here to the greater Toronto area and Mississauga is uh, possibly a once-in-a-lifetime opportunity. So we're really pumped. It's going to be an exciting time. Uh, I won't say there won't be any uh, d- disruptions, but uh, the Pan Am Games Committee, City of Mississauga, and I'm sure all the municipalities are working very hard to make it a, a special experience for everyone involved. Traffic and transportation, I think, is is always been an ongoing issue, so I don't think it uh, will be any better at that point, although there are some initiatives to get the the traffic flowing and movement, uh, not only of, uh, I guess, citizens, but also of of our guests that are coming from around the world. Uh, There will be some uh, aspects to it that that might be a little bit frustrating. One of the things the Pan Am uh, group is working on is to engage volunteers in the community that they live. So um, we're probably looking at 20,000 volunteers across the GTA Golden Horseshoe area. And so um, more of the volunteers working in the areas that they live will minimize that traffic anyway. But we will have guests and and visitors. We will have athletes, media traveling across everywhere from Ajax through to Hamilton and up north into Minden for the uh, some of the um, whitewater canoeing events. So exciting times, but uh, I guess we ask everyone to to be patient and deal with it. It's not every every day we get to showcase uh, what we have to offer the world uh, from a sports perspective and really just encourage the community to get out and volunteer, uh, but definitely get out and attend the games. There'll also be some uh, pre-game ramp-ups. This July 10th will be the one-year countdown to the Pan Am Games, so everyone's invited to come on out to Celebration Square in Mississauga and uh, really get a feel for uh, Apache, the Pan Am Game mascot, all of the... uh athletics that'll be going on and and just really celebrate sport. Well, you know, it's funny because a number of years ago, actually, it was about five, six years now, I think, I was down in Dubai. There was so much talk going on because of all the development that was happening and different things that they were trying to bring into their country and the type of exposure that uh, they were really kind of building. And interesting enough, Mississauga, I mean, the minute that our Marilyn Monroe Towers, (laughs) I I have to bring that into the conversation because, you know, 
I mean, the identity, it, it, they actually brought such a world renowned identity just from having two condominium towers, but because of the shape and the, and the history of Marilyn Monroe, you know, and being such an icon. So I have to hit it out there. So if anybody is not familiar with Mississauga is, well, you, what you do is you go out, you watch the Pan Am games, you can go and check out the Marilyn Monroe towers. And then after that, you can see all the other wonderful sites of Mississauga. But isn't that interesting how that came about? It's something that nobody really even thought about uh, at the time when it was all constructed. But I mean, the minute you are on Highway 10, which is also here, Ontario, towards Burnhamthorpe, which Burnhamthorpe, of course, is city center is not too far from there is uh, our city hall and whatnot. In order for you to go to the north end of the city over to Matheson, where the Hershey Center is, right, you're going to end up passing the Marilyn Monroe Tire. Yes, because it's all in the center core of the city. <laughs> that's right. And they're, qu- they're quite a landmark. They're really Aren't quite they? panoramic. And even from, you know, uh, the, the west or east side of the city, looking across Burnham Thorpe, they kind of stand majestically and uh, beautiful shape, beautiful uh, look. And as you say, because uh, they recognize Marilyn, and I think the other one they've kind of called uh, or dubbed Joe. So the Marilyn and Joe. That's uh, right. <laughs> <laughs> Considering where the uh, Marilyn Monroe and Joe Tower are, anyone out there, you're planning to put it on your schedule? to attend the games. Uh, remember, we have some great sites here in Mississauga that you can also take advantage of. And certainly, I mean, downtown Toronto is like 15, 20 minutes away as well. Plus, the games are continuing all in a pretty much a, a, a radius of the city with all of the different uh, types of sports. Isn't that correct? I mean, well, so they're all within driving distance. Yes, absolutely, much, yes. absolutely. But uh, I, I think in terms of being in Mississauga, one of the great advantages we have, not only hosting pretty much every day of the game. So basically from the Pan Am game starting on July 10th through the Parapan games, uh, we are one of the few communities that will be running every day of, of the games. And add to that uh, our great Celebration Square at the Mississauga Civic Center. There'll be all kinds of activities going on there so the community can come out, watch, all the games on the big screen and just really celebrate and enjoy the atmosphere of the Pan Am Games. It's going to be tremendous and exciting. Susan, you do a lot of public speaking, I think, do you not? Like you, you've got uh, you've got a lot of things on the go. <laughs> <laughs> yes, I I share about my experience because I suffered a traumatic brain injury nine years ago. So I help to encourage patients or our other individuals that are also going going through what I went through. I try to encourage them and help to give them positive messages on my experience. I'm also writing a book, by the way, um, fully out next year. Oh, but, that's wonderful. But just sharing my autobiography, like where I am right now, to where, where it all began, back at Homelands, shared in the Mississauga area. So I'll be giving a little bit of an account of my life from the beginning to where I am right now. Nine years, that's how yes. long this access has been. And in that nine years, I've done a lot of volunteering, whether it's with, I'm so happy for the Minnesota Sports Council. I've, uh, I speak at jails. I speak in hospitals. I speak at schools. Um, I'm also right now doing a drop-in program at my church, Praise Cathedral Worship Center. So I do a lot of outreach to the young men and young women at our church, sports, whether it's, right now it's basketball. Mm-hmm. So I'm at basketball, but we also have soccer. I just came back from a sports conference in Ohio. I still am connected to the school I went to at Malone University in Canton, mm-hmm. Ohio. So I do a lot of stuff there. I keep my, I'm, I'm quite busy, <laughs> to say <laughs> the least. But I'm very grateful and thankful to a lot of the friends and family that have supported me through my little setback. I call, I call it a minor setback, mm-hmm. but I'm still moving forward. I'm very encouraged and very inspired and very um, over, I don't know how to say overjoyed. I'm, I'm very blessed. What do you see as the future? I know that things are, are is there something out there that you, you've got kind of in your back of the mind of something that one day you're just going to say, okay, fine, you know what, the board is going to approve this and we're going to move ahead on it. That's it. Well, it's our, time. Uh, our, our, 
Currently, the Sports Council is very engaged in the development of the sport plan. And so uh, one big component of that is for us uh, to update our strategic plan. We've been very busy working on that. We are lucky to have such great volunteers as Olympian Lisa Alexander as our president and Olympian Susan Stewart. We have a number of other board members, Mike Toth, who's written a beautiful uh, book on birth to millennium Mississauga sports heritage, uh, Gord Hughes, who's actually Hockey Canada's volunteer of the year for 2012 and uh, just some amazing volunteers that support the sports council provide leadership and governance moving forward and as part of the sport plan key initiatives for the sports council we are working on developing partnerships with groups and organizations like volunteer mbc who help to provide volunteers to uh, the grassroots not only sports groups but all organizations that are looking for volunteers so we're looking to strategically strengthen those partnerships and moving forward support the grassroots sports organizations in our community to help help them uh, be successful in what they do they're very good at at what they do but it never hurts to be collaborative I think in a community to work together we're all kind of working to the same end sport for all for for life and so by strengthening things in in terms of training governance and one of the, the exciting initiatives for 2015 is we will be hosting a Mississauga sports summit and we are very excited about uh, the opportunities to bring, uh, you know, pre- uh, networking opportunities to the sports groups, uh, speakers who will be talking on topics that are relevant to sport and and uh, volunteer sport organizations in our community, and, and really just strengthening that and moving forward. Well, I think I think too. Does the Mississauga Sports Council they give some input with respect to recreation planning and so on? Do they not? Like you know, because I know we have a lot of parks and recreation uh, activities that are going on. Uh, we actually just participated in uh, Future Directions, which is a municipal uh, uh, master plan on uh, recreation and uh, libraries. A very exciting opportunity. There was com- community engagement, and so uh, yes, we were there uh, having Perfect. our say. Perfect. Well, that's important. So everyone out there, when you go and you start registering your children for any types of Mississauga sports programs, just remember that the Mississauga Sports Council is there every inch of the way. I'd like to thank, uh, you know, it's been great having you today, Kat. Catherine, and uh, we've had Catherine Holland, the executive director, and Susan Stewart, board of directors for the Mississauga Sports Council. So really thank you both for attending uh, the show today, and uh, it was just wonderful to hear everything that you're doing, and uh, I'm really impressed. I, I love sports, so <laughs> thank you. It comes you. through. Thank you so much for the opportunity. Thank yes, you. Thank you for the opportunity. And best yeah. of luck, and uh, I'm sure we'll be working somewhere along the way together because I think it's great. I think it's absolutely fabulous. You know, today we're actually talking about the Mississauga Sports Council. You're listening to Linda Pinizzato of the Condo Expert here at the Hayes FM. Hang tight, and we'll be right back.